All right, uh, hello, welcome back. Uh, I just wanted to make a little video that I guess I promised uh, a while back um, on my initial collection video. This is gonna be a little look at the activity books that Humongous Entertainment included in a majority of their releases. Uh, so I'm gonna just take a quick look at them. Um, some of them are actually very interesting um, and some things that I remembered and completely forgot about um, but I remembered, you know, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and it took me a long time to find out some information about them. But anyways, so um, first one I have here uh, is Freddy Fish. Um, so this one, uh, a, a lot of these first ones I'm going to show you, they're um, pretty standard, uh, like coloring books, activity books, something that you probably uh, played around with when you were younger. Um, you can see that these are pretty old. These are like some some rust spots on there. Um, but there's, you know, like, uh, word searches, uh, what are these called? Connect the dots, um, spot the difference, you know, a little bit of, of, um, educational quality here as well. Some mathematical, uh, computation as well. Um, crossword puzzles, um, let's see, you know, like trying to tell time. So it, it really is very balanced in trying to, you know, provide a, uh, an educational tool, um, as well as, you know, a bit of uh, fun, coloring, little activities, puzzles, that kind of thing. And that's pretty much the theme for most of these. So that's the Freddy Fish one. Uh, Freddy Fish 2, uh, 3, and 4 are pretty much similar fare. Um, I think generally as they go on, um, it leans more into, like, uh, coloring book and stuff like that type things. Um, less so on the on on the educational part, but there's still you know uh, activities and stuff that are in there. Um, also, like the earlier ones uh, are jam packed full. There's there's a lot of pages there, lots of activities to do. This one uh, already is substantially smaller. You can you can pretty much see the difference between them. Um, this one is substantially larger. And like I said. Um, as it goes on, you know, they're more of the same, and they're all themed around the original game that that they came with. So um, you might recognize some parts of the games. A lot of the characters are unique to each of these uh, um, activity books, um, stuff like that. And you'll notice as well, like a lot of the same types of, of uh, puzzles and activities are repeated in different variations. So we go Freddy Fish 4. Really, again, it's more the same. Um, once you've seen uh, one of them, you've pretty much seen most of them. Um, so there you go. There's another bit of a look at that one. Uh, so that's Freddy Fish ones. Uh, interesting here, the this is the original version of Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon, and this is the uh, the updated um, release here. These two are identical. Um, they are exactly the same. Uh, and it's really interesting because uh, the it still has the original kind of art style for Putt-Putt uh, inside. Um, even with the uh, the updated look on the on the newer one, you can see there that's the same. It's all the same. I'm really fortunate um, to have as many of these as I do. Uh, I feel like it's not as easy to find these um, when you're trying to find the the complete in box games. Um, I feel very very lucky to have the ones that I do, um, and I feel like I have uh, almost all of them. Um, in addition to these activity books, um, many of the games came with um, a sticker sheet as well. Um, in the very early, early releases, the first two Putt-Putt games, probably Fatty Bear as well, um, it also came with, uh, with a box of crayons, small box of crayons with four crayons. Um, and uh, Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon uh, included a... Uh, temporary tattoo, which I have as well, um, and like a huge sticker sheet. It, eventually, the sticker sheets got smaller, um, less stickers on them, but still, it's really, really cool to see. 
um, all those added bonuses, feelies as they're called in some like Infocom games and stuff like that. So there you go. This is, um, let's explore the farm. Um, and now these are the ones that I think are most interesting to me. Like they're, they're the most unique ones here. Uh, so here's a Pajama Sam. Again, this is very similar to the other ones that we've seen before. Really not that much different. Um, but then we get into Pajama Sam 2, which on the surface looks like the same thing. It's a you know, slightly bit narrower. Um, same thing going on here. Not much different. However, on the back side, upside down from the original perspective, is a comic book, um, which is one of the coolest things uh, I've, you know, that I've seen in relation to these games. It's a real looking comic book. It's very much like a 90s style Marvel comic book. Um, I'm not exactly sure who the artist is for this, but it looks fantastic. And it's it sets up the, the story that um, Pajama Man is playing out in the television series that Pajama Sam is, is watching at the beginning of, of Pajama Sam 2. So it's pretty cool. You get like a bit of a, a deeper look at the, what is it called? The Quaker, the Dust Devil, um, Captain Gelatin, uh, the Hero Sandwich and Milkman. It's very, very interesting and very cool. Um, I remember reading these when I was younger and I thought they were so cool. And I thought I was like, oh man, I'm reading comic books. This is awesome. This is dope. So that's that. Um, I know you can find uh, scans of this online if you want a deeper look, if you want to actually read the comic book yourself. Um, so Pajama Sam 3, same thing. Uh, what's it called? Uh, have the Adv Junior Adventurer's Handbook, the activity guide here, activity book. Uh, pretty standard again. And here we go. Here is the, the comic book that's on the other side. So this one, uh, there's no real reference to this in the game itself. It's just an interesting little Pajama Man adventure comic. He's, it's kind of like an inner space type, type story going on inside the, uh, the body of Milkman there. So yeah, the, the style is noticeably different from the other Pajama Sam comic. This one is is uh, a lot more cartoony. Um, it's not as like 90s, uh, you know, I, I guess Todd McFarlane style comic book. Um, but still, it's very fun. Very, very cool to see. So that's that. And uh, Spy Fox as well had his own sort of activity book, um, and it was uh, unique in that it was more of a spy guide. So it uh, opens differently, opens more like a, like a, I don't know, like a notebook, like a notepad rather. And this has all kinds of spy activities, like, uh, you know, little, little crafts you can do and some, you know, uh, puzzles and stuff like that. But it has like crafts that you can you can make that'll make you like a laser toothbrush or a, or a, some kind of tracking bug, um, so you can be your own spy, which is really cool. A door hanger. There's a secret messages and stuff like that. I remember doing many of these uh, when I was younger, which is really fun. This is some kind of a hidden message pizza. So that's the Spy Fox one or Spy Fox uh, Dry Cereal. And then Spy Fox 2 also had a very similar thing. Uh, and I remember looking through these all the time, uh, dreaming about wanting to be a spy and wanting to do some of these, uh, make some of these gadgets and stuff like that. So, so anyways, uh, that's just a quick look, very quick look. I wanted to just go through all these and just show the interesting bits that uh, I have seen about all of these. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching.